Hi, I'm Tim Kruppenbacher. I'm the operations manager for GE on the Hudson River dredging project. More than a year ago, GE began to build the processing, treatment, and transportation facilities needed to support the Hudson River dredging project. When we started this 110-acre property in Fort Edward, New York, was no more than a vacant cornfield. There was no existing infrastructure, roads to the site, or utilities such as water or power. Today, a significant transformation has taken place. Roads to and through the site are graded, paved, and striped. The wharf is built and equipment installed, the rail yard is ready, and two large buildings where dredged materials and water will be processed have been erected. This is an aerial photo taken of the property a short time ago. This property was selected by the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency for this project because of its proximity to the New York State Champlain Canal and an existing mainline railroad. Once dredging begins, dredged sediments will be brought on barges to this wharf, located about one mile away from the Hudson River through Lock 7 of the Champlain Canal. This area of the canal was widened by 65 feet to enable non-project vessels to pass by when project barges are moored here for unloading. Once dredging begins, dredged material will be unloaded from the barges by equipment stationed on the unloading wharf. Up to three barges may be moored along the 1,500-foot wharf at a time. In addition, barges or other river equipment needing repairs will be staged at a neighboring work wharf. Adjacent to the wharf, in the size separation area, crews have installed the equipment that will be used to remove oversized debris and gravel from the dredged sediment. A huge trommel will process sediment from the barges, sifting out anything that's larger than a nickel. Larger debris will be loaded into trucks, then temporarily staged on site. Ultimately, this debris will be loaded onto rail cars for disposal off-site. The remaining sediment then moves to one of the two hydrocyclones to have the grit and sand separated. The remaining slurry will be conveyed via pipelines along the facility's main road to the 520,000 gallon gravity thickener. The gravity thickener tank is erected and painted. A polymer will be added to the slurry in the tank to make the dewatering process more efficient. From the gravity thickener, the slurry will be pumped into filter presses in the 41,000 square foot sediment dewatering building. Inside, the slurry will enter one of 12 filter presses specially manufactured for this project. The filter presses have been installed in the building on steel stands that are 20 feet in the air. Crews are now working to connect the miles of pipes that will carry the slurry and the extracted water throughout the plant. The dewatered sediment that comes out of the filter presses will resemble a cake-like material. When the presses are opened, the cake will drop into a dumpster situated on rails beneath each press. Dumpsters will be transported by truck to one of two twin temporary staging areas. These enclosed structures, each 365 feet long and 100 feet wide, have doors on either end. Material will be loaded in one end and will be removed from the other. Crews have installed a ventilation system for each building to filter the air in the buildings if needed. The water from the filter presses, as well as any rainwater collected on the property, will be pumped to equipment inside the 28,000 square foot water treatment plant. Much like a municipal water treatment plant, the water will be treated here and then recycled for use on the site or discharged to the Champlain Canal. Contractors have installed tanks that perform a variety of functions in the process and as you can see are continuing to connect the miles of piping required. At all areas around the site where dredge sediment will be handled, a flexible geomembrane liner was installed to protect underlying soils from migration of PCBs. More than two million square feet of the liner has been installed and covered with clean fill, stone, and pavement. The filter cake, coarse material, and large debris will be loaded onto rail cars for transport to a disposal site in Texas. To support this part of the process, GE's contractors installed more than seven miles of railroad track. Contractors have finished the last of the work on a concrete pad alongside the loading track. A 7,000 square foot operations building has also been built to support rail operations. Through all this work, GE and its contractors have accomplished even more. 
The project has had zero lost time accidents in more than 600 days of construction. By planning the work and then working the plan, everyone working on the site is committed to a daily culture of safety. As you can see, tremendous progress has been made since construction began in the spring of 2007. All of this construction has been performed safely and efficiently. If you have questions or would like additional information on the Hudson River Project, please contact GE at 518-792-4087 or email us at info at hudsondredging.com.